Once again, we are back on Igmar Sojki Tea Talk Train of Thought with a series of an episodes with Mr. Baljeet Gujral, a dreamer, doer, and entrepreneur in India. So, welcome back to another episode of uh, Tea Talk Igmar Sojki. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. In fact, it was an interesting journey. What we have seen, how you have started your career, and maybe your passion. What we have seen, and uh, you were part of an uh, uh, like as far as education qualification, which is concerned, you have chosen an engineering. as well as civil engineering uh, uh, which is concerned like uh, now in fact can you uh, share some more experience while doing your engineering what was there in your mind why uh, like uh, into construction so uh, you know the whole idea of doing a btech was that i think back in 2000 uh, you know we had limited options to think mm-hmm. I mean, like we had uh, medical we had engineering Mm-hmm. uh we had defense services mm-hmm. or then you had your you know regular graduation whether it's a ba bcom mm-hmm. uh so fortunately when i did from karnataka uh, so karnataka had an option that you could choose science and uh, maths both mm-hmm. so i actually appeared for my medical examinations as well as engineering and i got through both of them oh i see <laughs> so uh you know my my mother always wanted me to be a doctor and mm-hmm. uh, I just didn't wanted to go to medical. Uh okay. so I cleared both the entrance examination and I remember the day that we got the selection letter at home I actually hid it. The oh. the selection letter from the medical. Oh medical. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I never informed my parents and when the engineering invite came I said look I have made it through the engineering I don't think I have made it through the medical only later many many years later I you know shared yeah, with really, her really. and she was <laughs> quite heartbroken that you know you shouldn't you should have chosen medical over but mm-hmm. i i think it was a decision that uh i just had in mind that i'll go out stay for four years at a new place you know uh, get out of my comfort zone mm-hmm. uh, new you know friends uh, new things to learn mm-hmm. stay in a hostel and uh, that was all in my mind and uh, civil engineering was the only option left when i was uh, when i went for the screening and i just picked up that so oh wow. i see interesting so in fact i think uh, after your engineering which was your choice you never went into an uh, medical uh, what made you get into ms in marketing and you went to an exford uh, brooks uh, university so uh, you know i was a very very average student uh, in engineering uh, so every semester i could hardly get through most of the subjects so you know uh, i had backlogs and mm-hmm. uh, no shame in accepting that because i think as students we we take uh, you know quite a plunge thinking that we'll be able to make it if we have done great in 10th and 12th mm-hmm. but engineering is quite quite uh, difficult and quite different in that sense mm-hmm. uh, so every semester i actually had two or three backlogs and by the 8th mm-hmm. semester i remember uh, i had six papers for the fresh semester and i had six backlogs so i had actually 12 papers to appear and if i didn't clear those 12 papers in the 8th semester i wouldn't get an engineering degree in 4 years mm. so that was a challenge which you know i had and uh, i had made up my mind uh, you know i mean like i was quite average and quite laid back also during my engineering days and i said okay this is the time when i need to buckle up and you know clear these things and you know i took up the challenge upon me that i will not only clear the engineering uh in eight semester with all the 12 papers but i'll also apply for premium institutes for my masters i see uh and i appeared uh, i applied to oxford i applied to cambridge mm-hmm. i applied to strathclyde university in scotland and uh, uh you know by god's grace and you know uh, sometimes things fall right at the right time at the right place i cleared all 12 papers cleared my eight semester and cleared all Entrance examinations for my master's degree, and then I chose Oxford Brooks. Oh, I so. see. Great. Uh, can I get some experience of being part of an Oxford uh, Brooks uh, University? I think it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, for Indian students, I mean, like especially then, back 20 years, you know, to get an exposure at an international level, where when you go, uh, things are very different than what we have in India. The mm-hmm. culture, the people, uh, the challenges in terms of, uh, you know. how education is perceived there mm-hmm. is very different uh you know once i landed there everything was you know new to me mm-hmm. i mean like uh, we had a class of about 30 students mm-hmm. and i was the only indian student in the class so we had like a very international mix of students mm-hmm. so the first thing 
that is you know thrown at you is uh, get accustomed to the culture and people you know mm-hmm. because everybody comes from different countries different diversity you know even when you're doing group projects the way you think and the way they think is mm-hmm. very different uh, mm-hmm. so you know to adjust to accommodate uh, and uh, you know to inculcate that habit of accepting everything which is thrown mm-hmm. at you and not resist it i think that teaches you a lot mm-hmm. i think uh, you know being a part of the entire city of oxford itself is known you know to be like the pilgrimage for people mm-hmm. who would want to go for higher education uh, right. so it's it's a great city in terms of culture great place for students to be i think those two years that i spent at oxford changed my perspective in terms of looking at things from a birds eye view you know mm-hmm. otherwise when i was in india everything was day to day like okay right. this is what we have to do today this is what we have to do tomorrow mm-hmm. but then i started taking my career and life very seriously when i actually went abroad i see and now in fact uh, many times we have seen people going abroad tend to uh, seek some job over there and ensure like uh, they work in that country for longer like yeah. uh, anything uh, which came in your mind on those line so i was one thing i was very clear that i was not finishing my education and going back to india primarily a because i had taken a, a loan mm-hmm. uh, to for my higher education so as i said we didn't come from a like a rich family or a well to do family mm-hmm. so for my education i had to pursue like an educational loan mm-hmm. uh, i was very clear that i would not pass on of course that uh, you know burden to my family or to my mm-hmm. parents mm-hmm. and i decided i'll work till i can actually first repay my loan nice Fortunately for me, uh, I finished, and I had three offers, job offers in hand, mm-hmm. uh, and I picked up the most lucrative one, which was banking. Actually, that's how banking happened to me. I see. Uh, so a lot of friends over years, a lot of relatives asked me that you know what's the correlation you did engineering, then you went for masters in marketing, correct, and you finished marketing and you picked up a job in finance. Mm-hmm. and the answer was very simple you know i was looking at the most lucrative job which would pay my bills and you know actually give me a hefty payout mm-hmm. but uh, i went into finance and i actually started enjoying it i mean like i love being nice. in finance so i think mm-hmm. uh, that's that's where i landed with the finance job okay now i think your first job was in uh, royal bank of scotland yeah so i think it was a good break like uh, well, absolutely absolutely i mean like uh, royal bank of scotland uh, earlier used to be called natwest mm-hmm. and then rbs uh, it's one of the most reputed banks in uh, uk and mm-hmm. also well known globally i think that was a great break for me that uh, you know i finished my master and landed up a job in finance of course i started from scratch because i had no background or no understanding of finance mm-hmm. uh, but I think you know my engineering uh, degree also helped me because we had slightly more analytical thinking and which you know helps you in a finance kind of job. Correct. correct. Uh, the growth was much quicker for me in that industry. Okay, I see. And then after Royal Bank uh, of Scotland, like you know, uh, you took a call of uh, getting into ICICI Bank. Yes. Uh, yes. Why that shift, like immediately? So, uh, so I, I, you know, kind of started. Uh, the first thing was I started missing home, missing friends, missing family. I stayed for you know a good three years in uh, UK, mm-hmm. and uh, also I you know was able to pay off my entire education loan in that period. Oh. So I was like, okay, this is fine now, and uh, I always wanted to come back home and do something in India, and nice. you know specifically Bombay. Bombay has been my mm-hmm. you know uh, place of birth, and also I've been more inclined to do something in the city. Mm-hmm. So I decided to pack up my bags, come to the city, and start with a job. and uh, that's how icsc happened i landed back in bombay and in about a month's time i actually got my first job and that was in icsc bank so is vatan ki mitti jo na aapko wapas bula rahe hain aap okay good great uh, then from icsc you got into an access bank like as a product manager and the investment consultant like yeah so how was the experience over there so uh, you know i think as a temperament uh, i had this thing that whenever i felt very comfortable and easy in anything mm. i wanted change oh, okay uh so you know while i've loved being at the respective uh, organizations for about a year and a half two years at the initial stage of my career i've always learned so much from there and that has helped me take the next challenge you know uh, so when i was in uh, products i moved to investment consulting 
when we were in consulting i moved to sales mm-hmm. so i always loved changing my current situation where i was feeling comfortable mm-hmm. and that actually motivated me to uh, switch various organizations and take different roles which were very different from what i was doing in the previous organizations i see no doubt like being a part of an adventure like you want to explore the possibilities Absolutely. and go to the different places yes, yes. and same thing i think you have there uh, de- you did in your career like right, you know right right uh, then how you got a break off at ubs uh, wealth management as an associate director like yes so i actually had spent close to about 4 uh, 4 four and a half years in banking uh, in india uh and i then i think by that time uh, with my experience with icici bank access and standard chartered bank ubs was just setting up uh, you know an office in india uh, so it's a swiss bank it's you know known for its uh, strong brand image and they were setting up in india and they wanted to hire pick up a very small team to set up wealth management uh, i happened to meet them they liked my profile uh, we had a uh, lot of things in common in terms of uh you know what a employer employee relationship could be mm-hmm. and yeah that happened and i think uh, that was one of the turning points in my life so to say because uh finally i actually not only moved uh to an associate director level which was great in terms of position but also in terms of money it was great so you know nice. uh, Uh, but i think again like uh, you started with an uh, uh, like you know royal bank of scotland and then had an experience with icis and access bank uh, i think it was very interesting uh, and even in being part of a ubs wealth management as an as a said uh, director i think it's a very interesting story no doubt i think you're part of an adventure uh, while being in the engineering college you have explored the possibilities of going on the bike or uh, 200 kilometers just to explore the different different areas which are there and same i think you have been doing with your career while being into the banking uh, sector i think it's a very interesting story of uh, mr baljit gujra like dreamer duo and the entrepreneur in india in fact uh, now in fact in mid of uh, being part of an corporate career he went for an uh, further value addition which will catch up with him on our next episode on ek bun soch ki tea talk till then keep on uh, watching uh, tea talk show and catch up with mr baljit gujra in our next episode uh, go to www.tiktok.net subscribe and like the channel as much as you can so thanks a lot for making uh, to this show like thank, thank you, you thank you thank you